Hi, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and this is a video on counting subatomic particles. Um, we did this topic already in class, but um, we have a midterm coming up, so this is important for us to re re review it. Okay, um, composition. The atom is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And the protons and neutrons are located in the nucleus in the center of the atom now the nucleus right here is not drawn to scale guys um the nucleus is very 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 small in comparison to the rest of the atom but it's just drawn like this for emphasis um the protons have a positive charge okay neutrons from its name neutral something like neutral has no charge okay and electrons have a charge of minus one okay now moving on in terms of mass Electrons have this mass right here officially, right? But for our purposes, it's so small, we call it zero. Okay, so for our purposes, electrons have no mass. Now, in terms of protons and neutrons, they both have a mass of one or one atomic mass unit. And these are the symbols over here for the protons, neutrons, and electrons. Um, I think you can find some of this information on table O if you forgot, but you should remember this. You should memorize, commit this to memory. Okay, we're moving on. Um, neutral atoms have the same number of which subatomic, subatomic particle guys? Yes, if you're neutral, right, you will have the same number of protons and electrons. Okay, so if you're protons, okay, and your electrons are in the same number, your atom would be neutral. Okay, so moving on, if you form a positive ion, what has to change? Now, it's tempting to say, um, well, if you form a positive ion, we're going to change your protons, right? But we must remember, guys, that protons give atoms their identity. So if you change the number of protons, you change the identity of the atom. And once again, for our purposes in um, our normal chemistry and chemistry one, that's a major violation. We don't want to do that. So in terms of ions, right, we always want to focus on the electrons. So for positive ions, how do they form? Yes, by loss of electrons, okay? Now, when you lose electrons, okay, what do you think is going to happen to the size of the ion, the resulting ion? Yes, the size will decrease. Likewise, if we focus on negative ions, negative ions are formed by the gain of electrons. Okay, and when you gain electrons, your size of the ion will increase. Okay, so that's a bit of review right there in terms of ions. Now, once we know that, we can now move on to um, the different mass numbers and the topic numbers in relation to the atom. Okay, before we move on to counting the actual particles. All right, now the mass number, as we said before, if we go back to the first slide, is gained from the protons and the neutrons in the atom. For our purposes, the electrons have no mass. So the mass number here, and sometimes it has a symbol A in our textbooks, the mass number is made up of the protons and the neutrons. Okay. Now the atomic number, okay, right here, is the number of protons only okay so the pro atomic number and number of protons go hand in hand and it also has the symbol z used in our textbooks alrighty now in terms of mass number okay we stated before the number of neutrons the number of protons give us the mass number and once again the atomic number is the number of protons now we come up with this equation in the bottom here folks that if you want to find the mass right the mass of the atom you will add okay the atomic number and n the number of neutrons right so the atomic number and the number of neutrons tell you okay the mass number now if you wanted to find n which is the number of neutrons what would you do how would you rearrange those guys 
Okay, yes, you would have N being equal to A minus Z. Or to find number of neutrons, you simply have the mass number, okay, the mass number of protons and neutrons, and you subtract the atomic number from it, all right? And that will give you the number of neutrons. So we'll tackle that later on. Now, before we move on to the actual count of particles, we'll just talk briefly about isotopes. Okay, we have a picture over here. And we have three different types of hydrogens, all right? Now, how do we know it's hydrogen? The yellow circle with a positive represents our protons, so we know protons give identity. If you look in our reference tables, as always, we have our reference tables out. Protons give identity, so one proton makes you hydrogen. But if we look carefully, folks, we have two neutrons here. We have only one here in the middle for deuterium. Tritium has two protons, two, two neutrons. And for this guy right here, in our normal hydrogen that we're accustomed to, he has no neutrons, okay? So that gives us a term called isotopes. Isotopes are substances or atoms that have the same number of protons, okay? Same number of protons, but they have a different, D-I-F-F -F for short, they have a different number of neutrons okay so once again isotopes have the same number of protons but different number of neutrons okay so if you change the number of neutrons okay once again we go back to the first slide if you change the number of neutrons neutrons okay are important in relation to the mass of the atom so if you change the number of neutrons you change the mass of the atoms okay isotopes have different mass numbers but same atomic numbers. Okay, now before we move on, guys, um, I wanted to point something out. If you look on your reference tables, you will see that hydrogen has the atomic mass of 1.00794, right? And the reason for that is that it's an average of the masses and abundances of the naturally occurring isotopes in hydrogen. Now, over here, we just did it. Hydrogen has normal hydrogen, which you call hydrogen, hydrogen one. Okay, there's deuterium, dut, hydrogen two, and there's tritium, hydrogen three. Th one, two, and three refers to the masses of those hydrogens. So hydrogen one, hydrogen two, hydrogen three, hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium are three different types of hydrogen. They're isotopes, okay, because they have different masses, but they're all the same elements. Also, if you notice in the bottom here with carbons, there's carbon 12 and carbon 13. Carbon-12 is a more normal carbon that we're accustomed to, but there's also carbon-13. Notice the percentages, they're very different, but the average of the abundances and those masses give us the atomic mass. So that's why there's a funny decimal in that number. Okay, so we're going to move on. Okay, now we're able to actually um, do some counting of the subatomic particles. Now... The first column says name. We all know that C represents carbon, so I'm going to leave that for you guys to write in later. Carbon. Now, as always, for this activity, you need your reference tables. So you find carbon and you look up the atomic number. So I'm looking at my reference table. I see that the atomic number for carbon is 6. So I'm going to put a 6 in there. Okay. If I look at the top of the symbol right there, I see a 12. Or I look on my reference table, I see 12.011 for the atomic mass. So if I round the atomic mass, roughly, that will give me the mass number. Um, so we use it as a rough guide. So our mass number will be 12. Okay. Now, as you said before, guys, the atomic number and the number of protons go hand in hand. They're, they're definitions of each other. So if I know the atomic number, I automatically know the number of protons. So anytime you write the atomic number down, write that same number down for the number of protons, which is six. Okay, and we established before, guys, to find N, to find the number of neutrons, right? We will subtract the mass number, okay? The top number, mass number, Subtract Z, the atomic number. So let's do that for to find the number of neutrons. Our mass number is 12. Okay, right here. 
and the number of protons is 6, so 12 subtract 6 will give me 6, okay? So that's our number of neutrons for carbon, okay? Now to find the number of electrons, we will assume that carbon here is neutral. Now how can we assume that? In the fact that they showed us no charge in the carbon, there's no positive or negative charge, we will assume it's neutral. And for you to be neutral, okay, we said that you must have the same number of protons and electrons, right? So, in terms of number of electrons, if you have the same number of protons and electrons to be neutral, if we have six protons right here, all right, we therefore assume we have six electrons. All right, now, next one. Next one's nitrogen. Now, we have nitrogen, but we have to be careful. We have a little minus three right there. Now, what does minus three mean, folks? Okay, minus three means you, yes, you gained three electrons. Now, remember, negative charge means gain of electrons, and that three means you gained three electrons. So, we're going to keep that, in, keep that in our memory banks for a second. Now, I'm going to look at my reference table. I'll find nitrogen. The atomic number is 7, so I'll write it down. Now, automatically, I'll write 7 down for the number of protons, okay, because it's, they go hand in hand. Now, in, I'm looking at my reference table. I see the atomic mass is 14.0067, so I'm going to round that to approximately 14 for my mass number, okay? Now, I'm moving on to the number of neutrons. Now, as we said before, we will subtract these two numbers, mass number, subtract number of protons. That will give me the number of neutrons. So 14 subtract 7, okay, will give me 7. Okay, now number of electrons. I have to be careful. So I'm going to assume first, right, for neutral, neutral nitrogen, right, I will have 7 electrons. Since it has 7 protons, I'm going to assume 7 electrons for neutral neutral nitrogen but since i have minus three okay i have minus three what does minus three mean i have three more in addition to that so seven plus three gives me ten so i'm going to write down ten right here okay so how did i get ten i'm going to assume first if i have seven protons and i have seven electrons for neutral nitrogen okay that's seven electrons normally but since i have minus three I'm going to add three more electrons to get 10, okay? All right, now we're moving on. We are going to K, which is potassium. I'm gonna have you guys write it in, okay? Now look at my reference table. K has a atomic number of 19. So automatically I'm gonna write 19 for my protons, okay? I'm gonna look at my reference table again. I see that there is 39.0983, so running that to a whole number will give me approximately 39, okay, for mass number. Now I have to figure out the number of neutrons. So how do we do that? Yes, we have our mass number right here. We have our <clears throat> number of protons right here. We will subtract those two, 39 subtract 19. That should give me 20, okay, 20 neutrons. And we move on to the number of electrons. Now, we look at it carefully. We see that there's a plus one there. So what we do, we don't panic. We set ourselves normally. Um, potassium would have how many electrons? It would have 19 electrons because normally we think it's neutral, right? So 19 protons, 19 electrons. But what does positive one mean? It means that you, yes, it means that you lost one Electrons. So normally we'd have 19 electrons. So what we're going to do is subtract one from that, and that would give us, yes, 18 electrons. As always, what we're going to do now, we're going to pause the video, and you will do the next three Pb2, Ca, and Br-, and we'll go over the rest together. Okay. Alrighty. Now we moved on to the next guy, which is lead. I'll have you guys write it in. Okay. Um, the atomic number is given to us, which is 82, so automatically what can we do? We can write 82 where? We can write 82 right here, representing the 
number of protons. Once again, the atomic number, number of protons go hand in hand. And they were so nice, they gave us the mass number. Okay, so what we do here now is do a subtraction to find the number of neutrons. So what we're going to subtract, 207, 207, subtract 82. Okay, and that should give us approximately, if I'm not mistaken, okay, 125, right? Okay, now what we do to find the number of electrons, okay, we look at the ion, it's a plus two, what does plus two mean? It means that, yes, you lost two electrons. Now, once again, how do we figure out the number of electrons? We figure out that, okay, if lead was neutral, it would have 82 protons and 82 electrons if it was neutral. But since it's plus two, that means that what? It lost two electrons, yes, so we subtract two from the 82, and that should give us 80, okay? Now, moving on to CA. CA has no charge in it. It's a regular calcium atom. Okay, it's not an ion, it's a regular atom. So we write the name in here for calcium. We look in our reference tables. CA has a atomic number of 20. So automatically what we're going to do, we're going to write 20 in for our number of protons, right? Okay. We look in our reference table again. We see 40.08 to a whole number. We'll round that to 40. Okay. And we move on to the next column, which says number of neutrons. To find the number of neutrons, what do we do? Yes, we subtract the 40 and the 20. 40 subtract 20 gives us 20. Okay, so we found our number of neutrons. And how do we figure out the number of electrons? We first assume it's neutral. So if we have the same number of protons and electrons, it's neutral. And since there's no charge, we don't have to do any subtraction or addition. So we can say that it would have for neutral calcium 20 electrons. Okay? And the last one, what you're going to do, and you can do the rest on your own, Br minus. Br stands for bromine. They gave us the atomic number of 35 right here. So we'll use that for our number of protons, 35. Okay, we'll take a, take a breath. Now, they gave us the number of neutrons right here, right? So what we can do to find the mass number, we can add those two guys, 35 and uh, 45, right? And if I'm not mistaken, that should give us approximately 80, right? So we're gonna put an 80 right here, okay? Or you could have looked on your um, your reference table, but since they give us the, the, the number of neutrons right here, and we know the number of protons, we just simply add to get 80, that's fine. And to figure out the number of electrons in Br minus, we got to be very careful. It says a minus, so we take that into consideration. We say to ourselves, okay, good. Normally, it would have had 35 protons and 35 electrons. But since it's a minus sign, it means we gained one more. So we have 36 electrons for Br minus, okay? Um, once again, this is a brief um, review of counting subatomic particles. I hope this video was a help. And as always, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. And as always, again, the best thing to do, guys, is study, study, study. All right, take care and hope this video was a help.